Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Karthik. Um, I am the head of finance and operations at Sensoc. Um, so just to start off, uh, Sensoc is a UAV data analytics company. Um, we help infrastructure companies gather data from the field and uh, we provide deep analysis as to how their assets are performing, how the design has uh, happened and how the construction is uh, progressing. Uh, we are present. We have. Uh, we are present across sectors, but our first love, so to speak, is solar because um, two of our uh, co-founders are from the solar industry. Uh, uh, they are ex Sanderson um, SVPs. Uh, Viral in the audience uh, is also from uh, Sanderson. I am from Sanderson, so we have a lot of experience uh, in the uh, uh, in the solar space, and. Uh, and true to form, we have uh, most uh, we have really performed well in the uh, 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 in serving this uh, utility solar uh, industry with almost five gigawatts of uh, assets which have been served till date. Uh, so before I proceed further, I just like to uh, with a quick show of hands from the audience, how many of you are uh, seriously contemplating usage of drones on your uh, on your assets? Quite a few, and I think some of the people in the audience have already used uh, our products. So um, I think uh, for people who who are not familiar with how UAVs can help you, um, uh, UAVs uh, they can uh, deliver a bird's eye view of your plant uh, at all stages of development. Uh, uh, for example, when you're uh, at the time of uh, design, you want to see how your uh, how the land is going to the lay of the land. Uh, you don't want to uh, encounter any geological surprises, so you you deploy a UAV uh, on the field and you get a a, a clear 3D topographical uh, uh, map of uh, of the land that you're planning to um, uh, develop. Um, and at the time of construction, um, you want to uh, you would like to have a good idea of uh, the construction progress. You'll be dealing with uh, uh, 10 subcontractors and uh, 10 other suppliers, and you're not sure how the uh, construction is progressing. Um, in that case, uh, you can use a UAV to get a, a true picture of what's happening on the ground. And of course, for ONM, which is the most, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure most of you are from the ONM field, uh, you want to know how your uh, plant is performing and uh, uh, you want to make sure that there are no uh, non performing modules, there are no module defects. Uh, so you do a thermal uh, survey on, uh, on your plant and you can get a, a, a good idea of uh, how your plant is performing. Uh, so what Sensehawk delivers, um, so UAVs themselves are not, uh, are not of much use uh, for a, a solar practitioner because uh, in the end what, when you fly a UAV over your asset, all you're going to get is a, a bunch of photos. Um, these photos are not going to make much sense to you unless they're stitched together and uh, presented in a, good, uh, in a good manner. So what we deliver as uh, Sensehawk is a, a complete platform, end-to-end -end platform that will make uh, UAVs usable uh, by the end user. So uh, there are three legs to our, our platform. The first is, of course, uh, the UAV itself. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't manufacture UAVs. We use, oh, so just to be clear, UAV and drones are going to be interchangeably used uh, in, uh, throughout the day, I guess. UAV stands for unmanned aerial vehicles. I should have made that clear in the beginning. But anyway, so uh, we use off-the-shelf uh, hardware, and we also use highly customized hardware, uh, which um, uh, which can help you gather data from the field. Uh, we have developed a layer of software on top of the hardware, which makes it very easy for you to operate the drone to manage your um, uh, manage your uh, assets and so on. Uh, it's called the Link uh, Link software. And uh, once the data is collected, obviously you need to process it somewhere. And uh, for that, we have something known as Hawk AI or Hawkeye, which is our uh, uh, data processing engine. Um, and it uses, uh, amongst other things, it uses uh, machine learning and AI techniques to uh, to process your data and to uh, detect patterns and so on, uh, which will be able, which will help you uh, take decisions on the field. And the third leg of our platform, it's it's called Workspace. Uh, Workspace is a cloud-based uh, cloud-based window to um, all the all the stuff that uh, uh, that you have, all the data that's been collected, all the reports that been that have been generated, and uh, uh, and has been archived. Uh, so Workspace is a visualization platform for all your reports. And uh, yeah. Um, so um, I'm sure some of uh, many of you have been approached by other UAV uh, UAV solution providers. But what makes us different 
compared to the uh, rest of the field is that we have a deep sector focus. Like I mentioned, I'm uh, uh, four, four of us. Uh, it's, uh, at SenseHawk, are uh, have had a um, lot of experience in the solar uh, solar sector, and uh, from the beginning, from the from the beginning, our focus has been on developing solutions rather than just use, using UAVs for the sake of using UAVs. What we do is we first uh, figure out if the customer has a problem, and then try to address that problem with a specific uh, solution, and then work backwards, and then figure out how how UAVs can uh, solve that problem. Um, and other uh, important uh, differentiators uh, is the use of uh, AI and machine learning tools. Um, uh, again, AI and machine learning, it's, it's, a, it's a buzzword. It's being bandied around a lot these days. And um, we, again, we, we make sure that when we're using uh, uh, an artificial intelligence tool, it's, it's being used for a specific purpose, as will be related in the rest of the presentation. And we also take uh, security very seriously. We realize that we are working with uh, um, really uh, important data for some of the biggest enterprises in India and, and abroad. So uh, we, have, we have security at all stages of our, uh, of our workflow. So, um, so the, uh, we are going to focus on uh, solar o &M, obviously. Um, and uh, a specific case study. So one of the most important uh, applications of UAVs in, um, in ONM would be uh, thermographic studies. And thermal studies of, th the thermal study of operating plants has been, uh, uh, it, it, is a, it, it has been tested qu for qu quite some time um, using handheld cameras and it's, it's proven to be effective but not a viable option because uh, a, a person who can, uh, a person using a handheld thermal camera can only, uh, sir, uh, can only uh, take readings from so many modules in a day, and in the end, uh, it, it's a manual process. It's it's going to be expensive, especially uh, if you need skilled labor to do this, and it's going to be slow. And in the end, you depend on the human being who's who's holding the camera to interpret the data and then mark the mark the hotspot or the anom anomaly on the um, on the module. And uh, in practice, what happens typically when, you, when you're using a handheld thermal camera is that you go around taking samples out of 5,000 modules, maybe you do 500 modules, and you, use a, you, you get a problet, probabilistic uh, figure of, uh, of the defect, uh, defect percentage. So out of 500 modules, you're, de you're detected f uh, uh, 50 hotspots, and you can use extrapolate that and figure out how much you're going to uh, uh, how the overall plant is performing. But with that data, you're not actually going to be able to do anything because the remaining 4,500 modules which you haven't, uh, haven't uh, inspected, uh, you don't know which, one, which ones among those are uh, going to be actually um, defective. And you can't go and take any corrective action when you, when, when you do a sampling sort of method. Um, so um, so UAVs, uh, UAVs can really uh, help you uh, solve this problem because UAVs are fast, they're inexpensive, you just need um, a single UAV as it was mentioned. Uh, we, we can do around, uh, with a single UAV you can do 25 to 30 megawatts a day if you really stretch our resources. And you can deploy two UAVs and you can easily finish off, uh, you can at least collect data from a 100 megawatt plant and by the end of the week you'll have your, uh, your report ready. And uh, and yeah, the other important thing is obviously the UAV is going to cover the entire site, and you're going to get uh, all the hotspots, absolutely all the hotspots that are in your site can be detected and can be um, uh, rectified at some point. So um, this is just an overview of our workflow. Um, so uh, like I mentioned, we have workspace. Workspace is like uh, is our cloud-based. Uh, Platform for uh, operating our uh, operating a UAV, and using uh, using workspace, you can um, scope out your plant, figure out what, what the optimal uh, flight plans are going to be, and demarcate your plant into uh, processing areas. And then, uh, depending on the uh, on the location of your plant and the um, and the position of the sun, we would recommend uh, this not ha happen when the sun is directly overhead because it affects with the uh, that's just one of the uh, guidelines. So based on a bunch of these guidelines, we determine what would be an optimal schedule for uh, conducting uh, the survey. 
And uh, once the scheduling is done, we, uh, we generate the flight plans, optimal flight plans depending on what the battery life is going to be, how much area can be covered in a single flight, and, and uh, the time of the day. And these flight plans are then executed, data is collected, and then is processed on our, uh, uh, using Hawkeye. Uh, sorry for the interruption again. If yeah. you could please move towards the conclusion. Uh, we, got working, uh, we are working on limited time. Okay, um, just like four more slides. So yeah, so this is, uh, this is, this is basically the reconstructed uh, thermal, Im th thermal image of a plant. So this is actually 500 to 1,000 images which have been stick uh, stitched together to, get, uh, to give this view. And if you zoom in, you're going to see hotspots. Um, so the advantages I've already, uh, I've already enumerated some of these. And uh, one, uh, so people are familiar with, I mean, some of you have already used our, uh, our uh, uh, solution. So uh, one major challenge that we've seen is that uh, the actual uh, plant layout versus what is actually, versus what is on the, uh, on the AutoCAD drawing that we've given at the beginning of the uh, survey, uh, there, there are lots of differences. And because of that, our planning goes out of whack. So what we need to do, what we uh, have started doing now is uh, doing an as-built survey of the, uh, of the plant. And with the as-built survey, we are going to uh, actually give a, this is going to be done for free. And this is something that the O&M operator is going to be thankful for because he'll know uh, how his AutoCAD drawing is differing from what is on field. And using this as-built survey, we are going to number all the modules give them unique IDs and use them to, so that these unique IDs can be used to track issues over the 25 year uh, life of the plant. And uh, the, other, uh, the other improvement that we are going to do is we are going to start using uh, special sensors which are going to give accurate temperatures of each uh, part of the module so that you can get, uh, uh, del you can do uh, delta analysis of, uh, of hotspots and you can also rank your hotspots based on uh, the difference in temperature versus the surroundings. And this is just a sample uh, uh, sample report that we generate typically for a user. So um, the one the image on top is the is the thermal image and it's uh, and the you can see the different the delta temperatures versus the surroundings here and the relative position of the table within the block. So um, the uh, the, the ONM operator can easily go to the narrow down and go to the uh, particular table, go to the module and take corrective action uh, as and when he he de uh, detects it. So um, the, we also uh, another, we also classify the hotspots based on uh, this is uh, this is where Hawk AI actually comes into play. We classify the hotspots based on the the pattern and the type, the probable cause. And the different causes include uh, a diode failure, bypass diode failure, um, uh, a, a regular hotspot which could be caused due to a cell crack or uh, bird droppings or uh, even vegetation, and uh, uh, reverse polarity and also a complete string which has gone, uh, gone missing. So this is an example of where an entire string has gone missing and is not producing. And we are planning to bring in further uh, improvements where the hotspots are going to be further classified based on the probable cause of the hotspot, including cell crack or, uh, or due to uh, encroachment of vegetation or due to uh, any other uh, regular cell defect. And uh, so we are going to further, uh, uh, we are going to make our uh, classification method methodology more, more sophisticated with more uh, types of uh, um, uh, more uh, with more uh, classification being brought into uh, the picture, and yeah, this is just a snapshot of what of our experience so far, and yeah.